Hello, my name is James Blackwell, and today I've got with me Greg McMahon, who is a consultant vascular surgeon. Morning, Greg. Hi, James. Today we're going to just run through this video of how to perform the ankle brachial pressure index. And we've got some video, and we'll run a commentary over the top. You can skip ahead to the video by clicking the link at the bottom right hand side of the screen. Let's get started. So the ankle brachial pressure index, it's a test that we use very commonly in vascular surgery. Um, and it's a way of quant trying to quantify the degree of um, peripheral arterial disease. Okay. Um, and it, is, it summarizes the ABPI on the wards. And uh, my understanding is that you end up with a systolic pressure from the lower leg, uh, which you divide by a systolic, systolic pressure from the the arm. Yeah, so we're, I mean, we're all familiar with uh, checking the patient's blood pressure by putting the cuff around the upper arm. And you really, with the ankle brachial pressure index, you're doing the same thing, but you're ascertaining the blood pressure in the leg. And then you're comparing it to the blood pressure in the arm. And, and ordinarily, the blood pressure in the arm is a good approximation of the patient's cardiac output. And any stenosis in the vessels of the leg will cause a lowering of the blood pressure in the leg and you can then compare the leg to the arm. So why, why do we perform the ABPI uh, in the clinical environment? So we often have patients who we think might have peripheral arterial disease uh, from their history, and, and we examine them and we think that they might have peripheral arterial disease. But to a certain degree, that's subjective. The ankle brachial pressure index is a way of objectifying uh, the finding of peripheral arterial disease. Um, it's very easy to perform, you can do it quickly in the clinic, and it's reproducible. So the ankle brachial pressure index is relatively consistent within one patient. And anyone in the healthcare environment can do the test? Yeah, it's easy to do, just as easy as you do a blood pressure in the arm, you just do the blood pressure in the leg as well. So it's not just vascular surgeons that do it, any doctor can do it medical students, junior doctor, nurses, healthcare assistants. Once you've been trained to do it, um, it's, it's reproducible um, and it's a good way of objectifying the degree of peripheral arterial disease. Okay, um, so you've said that it's a good way to measure peripheral uh, arterial disease. Are there any other relations to the ABPI score that we can read into? So we know that um, People with peripheral arterial disease have an increased risk of cardiovascular events and they have an increased risk of dying from cardiovascular conditions. So uh, the finding of a low ankle brachial pressure index does indicate they've got peripheral arterial disease and it means they're at risk of cardiovascular events. Um, it's also very useful for um, nursing staff, district nursing staff and community nursing staff particularly for knowing whether or not it's going to be safe to treat a patient's leg ulcers with compression. Because if they do an ankle break or pressure index and they find that there's a evidence of peripheral arterial disease then it's probably not going to be safe to compress that leg because you'll further compromise the perfusion of the tissues. Oh, peripheral okay. arterial disease is certainly very prevalent um, in the adult population um, the estimates are that about one in five of adults between 55 and 75 have peripheral arterial disease. Interestingly, only 5% of them have symptoms. And if you take the patients who have symptoms, you look at patients with claudication, then their mortality from cardiovascular disease is between 10 and 15% within five years. Patients with critical limb ischemia, about a quarter of them die within a year, and it's usually from cardiovascular diseases. So you can follow that all the way back to the ankle brachial pressure index and say that if it's low, then it probably is suggestive of other cardiovascular disease and other cardiovascular risk factors. Now, are there any things to be aware of uh, as a junior taking the ABPI um, in relation to actually taking it or indeed uh, interpretation of the results? Yeah, you need to uh, you need to know how to do it properly, and that's what we're going to go on to next. Um, and you need to be aware that there are some patients in whom the figure is not um, reliable, and that's particularly patients who have calcified disease in their tibial vessels. And I'm thinking there of diabetics or patients with renal disease. They tend to get very marked calcification in their tibials. The issue with that is that the blood pressure cuff can't compress the calcium. So you increase the pressure in the blood pressure cuff, you can still hear a signal in the foot, and you assume that the blood pressure is, is good. Actually, what you're seeing is the blood pressure cuff failing to compress 
diseased vessels because of the amount of calcification. So you just need to be wary that in certain groups of patients the result is not always reliable. So they may well have vascular disease in their legs, but we're just not seeing an accurate Yeah, API. usually with that degree of calcification, um, there usually is peripheral arterial disease, but you just can't compress it. So you don't, you don't lose the signal with the cuff. Mm. And um, just as we learn at medical school uh, about white coat syndrome, taking the blood pressure in a patient, obviously when we do the ABPI, uh, the patient's supine, and we should leave them to rest for a little bit before uh, just in case there is any th artificial raising of the blood pressure. Yeah, definitely. You want a steady state situation. You want to always be doing your ankle brachial pressure index with the patient supine. Again, as much because of re reproducibility as anything. But you want the patient resting and relaxed to get a true reflection of the blood pressures. And are there any contraindications to the test? Well, coming back to patients who've got um, leg ulcers, you sometimes find that the position of the ulcers means that they won't tolerate the cuff being inflated around their lower leg. Um, so you just have to bear in mind the condition of the leg to a certain degree. Mm. And presumably that sort of patient might go on to have further vascular imaging or Doppler. Yeah, if you think that there is peripheral arterial disease and they won't tolerate ankle brachial pressure index um, measurement, then you have to think about some other option for imaging their arteries. And that might be a duplex ultrasound or it might be a more sophisticated scan. Okay. So we've got the, our patient here lying supine at rest, and we've got a standard sphygmomanometer, and we're just putting that around the lower leg, the inside of the cuff to the inside of the patient, using ultrasound gel where we think the pulses are going to be found, and then using the Doppler probe to insinate those pulses. Find the pulse, we then start inflating the blood pressure cuff, keeping the Doppler probe on, in position. And we're essentially inflating the cuff until we lose the Doppler signal. Slightly deflating it until we find Doppler signal coming back in just as you take a blood pressure in the arm really. So the blood pressure in the dorsalis pedis there was 134 millimeters of mercury. Repeat this for the other foot artery, the posterior tibial vessel. Exactly the same procedure, find the vessel, intonate it with the Doppler probe, and then inflate the cuff to get rid of the signal. I noticed before, um, once the signal came back in, you then went above it again and came down slower to, the, to where the signal yeah, came I mean, in. Yeah, it's exactly the same way that you do a blood pressure in the arm. You, you want to find roughly where you think the pressure is going to be, and then you inflate and deflate around that to get a fine tuning of the reading. It's again 130 millimetres of mercury. We've used the same blood pressure cuff on the patient's arm now. And you see I'm using the Doppler probe again over the brachial artery. Once I've found the signal, I inflate the cuff to obliterate the signal. The blood pressure in the arm is usually a very good um, representation of the patient's cardiac output. It's unusual to get stenosis between arm and heart. So always go for the brachial artery just as you would with a normal blood pressure. Technically speaking, you should repeat it in both arms. And that will eradicate any um, um, upper limb stenosis unless you're unlucky enough to have a patient who's got bilateral subclavian stenosis. If we take the numbers from our normal healthy uh, volunteer, uh, returning to our equation of the ABPI is equal to the ankle systolic pressure over the brachial systolic pressure, 
the numbers that we achieved was 134 uh, over 120, giving us a value of 1.1. Is that as we would expect? Yeah, so you would say that the blood pressure in the leg should be the same as the blood pressure in the arm, and that should give you a, a ratio of 1.0. It's not unusual to get slight variations, and so, and it depends on where you look. But they would say that the normal range is probably from around 0.9 to anything up to 1.3. Um, so certainly in our case, that's a, that fits within the normal range. Below about 0.9, you start to think there might be some mild peripheral arterial disease, and as the ankle brachial pressure index gets even lower, you get some correlation to the degree of disease. Okay. When I was looking around about um, researching about ABPIs, um, everybody seems to quote different normal ranges. Um, <clears throat> some people quote critical limb ischemia as less than 0.3 or less than 0.5. Um, is that important clinically? or You have to put the whole picture together, really. Um, it's difficult to define critical limb ischemia based purely on an ankle brachial pressure index, and I think it's more important to define critical limb ischemia in terms of rest pain or tissue loss in the presence of peripheral arterial disease and there's not an absolute cutoff for how low the ankle brachial pressure index has to be um, for, for a patient to have critical ischemia. Great, so to summarise this video, um, at the beginning we covered what is the ABPI and why and when do we perform it. We've discussed the interpretation of the ratio that you actually um, get out at the end of the test uh, and we've seen the video of how to perform the test. Hopefully now we can take this into the clinical environment and use it on our patients. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, James. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.